Hello and welcome to Pickleball Therapy, the podcast dedicated to your pickleball improvement. Hope you're doing well out there. Uh, we were really happy to have Lynn Cherry on last week's episode. If you haven't checked that one out, go back there and check it out. Some really good conversation with Lynn there. Uh, highly recommend it. We were also on her podcast recently, Pickleball Fire. If you haven't checked that one out, go back there and check that one out. So what we're going to talk about this week is we're going to talk about a couple of different things. In the main section, we're going to talk about the three pillars of pickleball. And two weeks ago, we did an episode on the second pillar. Again, recommend if you haven't listened to it, go back and check it out. Today, we're going to talk about the first pillar of pickleball. I'm going to lay out the three pillars, talk about the first pillar today. I think you'll find it interesting and kind of a different way of thinking about the game. Uh, it's really how what we're doing inside VI Pickleball in order to make our, or help our players uh, become the best pickleball players that they can be by focusing on the three pillars of pickleball and getting, uh, getting through those. And then in the riff, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about arches. We're going to talk about height and or, or, dip, or whether you have depressed arches or super uh, um, uh, high mountain arches in your game and how that impacts your play. So if you're ready for the podcast, let's jump into it. Our 2021 VI Pickleball camps held by CJ Johnson and myself in Lake Tahoe, Nevada this September are currently sold out. You can get on the waiting list for those, but we will be holding our 2022 camps in January in lovely Tampa, Florida. It'll be a great time of year to come to Tampa. If you're interested in receiving information about the camps, send us an email at camps at wearepickleball.com. Again, camps with a plural at wearepickleball.com, and we'll make sure you get that information. As I mentioned a couple weeks ago, we did an episode on the second pillar of pickleball. And you know, let me frame it out a little bit for you because I didn't really do that good of a job of framing it out a couple weeks ago when we talked about the second pillar. I'm a big fan of the second pillar. It's about the second pillar has to do with seeing the game, understanding the game. Again, check out the episode a couple of weeks ago, episode number 47, if you want to listen to it. But it, uh, uh, you know, so the, the pillars are really interesting, a really interesting way of, of looking at the game and really interesting way of, of tackling pickleball and your improvement in pickleball the so the three pillars of, of pickleball are uh, the first pillar which we're going to uh, dive into today a little more is the mechanical pillar the second pillar which is the one from a couple weeks ago is the uh, the basically the understanding pillar the seeing the game pillar and then the third pillar which I'm going to talk about in next week's podcast is the athletic pillar so what I want to do this podcast is delve into or, or explore a little more the idea of this first pillar. What are we talking about here? And the first pillar that we're talking about in the three pillars of pickleball is the mechanical pillar. The mechanical pillar consists of the how-to. How to hit the ball, how to basically move on the court, how to, not where to move on the court, that's important because that's the second pillar, but the first pillar is how to move. So it's the mechanical part. It's how do you move laterally, for instance. Uh, you know, it's working on things like balance and mobility and things like that. You know, some some strength so that you can uh, properly position yourself on the court and and play for an extended period of time. And it's how to hit the ball. So it's basically the mechanical parts of how do you hit the third shot? How do you hit the volley? How do you serve? How do you return? So it's everything that's mechanical is the first pillar, the mechanical pillar. And that's the pillar that you can really, that where drills really shine. So when you're going out there and you're hitting, you know, 50, 100, 1,000 third shots or dinks or whatever you're doing, what you're working on is you're working on the mechanical pillar. You're, you're, you're training your muscles. You're training your eye-hand coordination. You're training the, just, it becomes instinctual where you just reach out with the paddle the way you want to reach out, you know, without a lot of backswing and you execute your stroke. And it's the same thing with movement. You know, when you're, when you're drilling your movement back and forth, uh, when you're working on your, tr in your work through the transition zone, all of those things that you're doing are mechanical. Mechanical is a, is a critical part of the game. Uh, you know, you obviously, in order to play pickleball, you need to be able to hit the ball. I mean, if you can't hit the ball with the paddle, then pickleball will be very difficult to play since that's how we play the game. And so the mechanical part is really, really, really important. And if, if I had to pick between the two sides of the mechanical, so the the body movement and then the paddle part of the of the uh, of mechanical, I would tell you to spend some time because it's an area that players don't spend enough time focusing on the movement side of it. What uh, CJ and I, as he, my partner in VI Pickleball, CJ and I always say in in terms of uh, uh, you know what we prefer is basically we prefer the movement part of the game over the the hitting part of the game because if like if I had to pick I'd pick movement because. I'd rather have a player who's in the right spot and hitting a mediocre shot 
than a player who's just not in the right shot and not in the right spot, I'm sorry, and has the fantastic shot. Because if you're not in the right spot, I don't care how good your shot is, you're not going to hit it because you're not near the ball. So you need to be first in the in the right spot, right? And secondly, be able to hit a good shot. Think of it this way. Think of it like, you know, start at the court. So, you know, the, the, the pickleball court. Our connection to the pickleball court are our feet, our shoes, but our feet, right? And so that's really the first interaction that we have. That's the closest interaction that we have with the, that's our connection, I should say, to the game, to pickleball. So we need to understand that our that our feet and where our feet are placed are, is critical to how we play the game. The second interaction or, or way that we connect with pickleball is through the paddle. The paddle makes contact with the ball. We actually, if you think about it, other than when we serve and pick the ball up, we don't touch the ball. Like the ball isn't, we don't touch it with our hands, we don't touch it with our bodies, we don't touch it, right? So the paddle the paddle provides one, one way that we interact with the game, and our feet provide the other way that we interact with the game. The mechanical pillar addresses both of those parts of the game. It addresses your feet, basically how you move your feet throughout the court, one way of interacting, and the second way of interacting, hitting the ball with the paddle. And that's one of the things that, that inside VI Pickleball we're really conscientious about, which is not just how you hit the ball, which is super important. I mean, you need to be able to, again, short backswing, compact follow through, ready position, grip pressure, all those things are very important. But alone won't get you where you want to go. It, uh, pun intended, I guess. To get where you want to go, you need to have the, the footwork, the movement side, the balance, stability, and things like that. And that's something that we're super, super critical about uh, uh, making sure that that we provide inside VI Pickleball uh, to our members so that they understand that this is part of the gr- your growth as a pickleball player and a pickleball athlete and also um, that you have the tools necessary so that you can do that. So as you work through the game, as you as you try and progress through pickleball and in, in your improvement, think of it in, as having, the, again, the three pillars where you have your mechanical pillar, which is the one we're talking about today, your strokes and your movement. Your second pillar, right, which is basically the understanding the game, seeing the game. It's the conceptual part of the game. Uh, it's the it's the knowing. It, the the one the first one is the how to. The second one is the when and the why. Why am I hitting this shot? When when is it right to hit a third shot drop versus maybe a drive or a lob? And then the last one we're going to talk about next week more in detail, which is the athletic pillar. I think you're going to be surprised at at how important that is in terms of your overall. Uh, approach to the game, your overall improvement of the game, and only with the three pillars can you become the best pickleball player that you can be. All right, if you want to hear about arches and how important they are to pickleball, and I'm not talking McDonald's arches, I'm talking the arch, the trajectory of your shot, stay tuned for the riff. You'd like to help your friend or family member learn how to play pickleball, but how? Now it's easy. Pick up a copy of Play Pickleball, A Beginner's Guide. It's the most complete guide to playing pickleball. Available as a digital download or in hard copy at intopickle.com or at Amazon. Let's keep growing the sport. One of our VI Pickleball members asked inside the community about balls being slammed. And, and, and what was happening to him, which happens to a lot of players, is myself included, is you, you get slammed. And no one likes getting slammed. And so the question is, how can I reduce the number of slams that, that are coming my way, right? I don't, I don't like eating balls. I don't want my partner to have to eat balls. Nobody likes that. So is there something I can do to reduce that? And in the conversation, I was basically, I was trying to uh, tease out what was going on. And we started talking about um, the, the shots that he was hitting. And he made uh, the comment that his shots were too high. I responded by saying that, I, that the shots were probably too deep. Um, it could be height and depth, but depth is really the factor that is causing the slam, not so much the height. So we kind of had a conversation about that, and I told him I would I would put together a video uh, about it, which I have done for uh, this week. And so, uh, I, but I wanted to talk about it as well because I think it's something that is really important to understand uh, as part of your game in, in order to reduce pop-ups, the, what we call pop-ups, and also avoid getting slammed. One of the things that, that jumped out at me in watching the, the match that I was pulling the videos from for this week's analysis is the, and there, there were four very nice players. They were very, um, uh, they were very competent on the court. They hit the balls fine. Everything was fine. But one of the players had a pretty low, actually two of the players, two of the players had a pretty low arc on their shot. 
And so what was happening was their balls weren't particularly high. I mean, you know, I can show you higher shots hit by pros in third shot drops that are at least three or four feet higher than they were hitting them that don't get slammed at the, the pro shots, I mean. Their shots weren't that high, but they were very deep. So they were basically, they were they were coming really deep. And so what was happening was because the balls were deep, even though, again, they weren't that high, the opponents were able to put paddles on them, say, around their shoulders, shoulder, sometimes around the head, shoulder, sometimes around the, the bottom of the ribs. But they were able to basically take those balls and then and then attack them, right? Sometimes slam, sometimes just, you know, attack shots, attack volleys. But basically they were able to attack the balls. And the reason is because the balls were deep by these players. And when when you compared them to some other shots during that match, what you started to realize was that the shots that had the low, they had a low arc to them or a low trajectory to them, even though the height may have been lower than the higher arcing shot, because they were going deep, they were getting attacked. The, the converse was that there were shots that had a higher arc to them. They had just had a higher trajectory um, or the same trajectory sometimes, but higher sometimes, but they weren't going deep. So the, what you want to do is when you're playing, if, especially when you're hitting defensive shots, when you're hitting shots that are third shot drops is a defensive shot, resets are defensive, dinks can, can be defensive or offensive, but usually you want them to drop. So we're going to call them defensive today uh, for purposes of this conversation. You want to try and get your shots to have a a kind of a peak and then a dip. So you want them to look kind of like like the Alps, you know, kind of high and drop, as opposed to looking like a foothill or something like that, where basically it comes up and then it just keeps on traveling and traveling deep, because those deep balls are the ones that are getting slammed and are getting attacked. If you want to find out, if you want to just look at this more and understand it more, check out our video on YouTube that we dropped this week. Uh, regarding the um, the depth of the shot versus the height of the shot. You're going to see it there. And then in that video, I'm going to link to a uh, bonus video uh, or a way to get to the bonus video. I'm not sure exactly the mechanics yet, but there's going to be a bonus video that's actually going to show the arcs of the shots so that you can check those out. If you're a VI Pickleball member, the bonus video of the arcs will be in the community, so you don't have to worry about reaching out to get it because you'll already have it. So Anyway, so that the next time you're playing, focus on your on your on the arches. If you're getting if you're getting slammed with the ball, uh, think that maybe your balls are going too deep, perhaps, and maybe elevate the arc and let it drop on the other side so that they cannot attack the ball. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the podcast this week. Uh, we're at episode 49, which is kind of exciting because we're almost uh, what three episodes away from episode 52, which I guess makes it a year of doing podcasts. So it's kind of exciting. And uh, if you enjoyed it, please give us a rating uh, wherever you listen to this. It helps us reach other listeners. And if you enjoyed the podcast, please share it with your friends. If you liked it, they probably will too. Be well out there, and we'll see you next week.